here's where we're at. We've got the head sculpted and baked. I went ahead and sculpted the base of the shoes. I'm gonna do high top vans this time. Normally I do Converse, but I wanted to try something different. I tried to do like the waffle cone on the bottom. Got the little vans tag on the back here. And then I'm gonna wrap these in a fabric. In close up of the head, it is baked. I still need to make a, a cast of this and then create a mold of it. I don't think I wanna use the original clay head. I really want this puppet to be a step up from my other puppets that I've made. I'll do that eventually. I went to the store today and got fabric for clothing, which I wanna work on today. I already had these hands sculpted from a different marionette I was making but never finished. Uh, and since I'm in the zone with this one, I think I might just steal them. I mean, I think it looks really cute. Open hands. I won't be able to decide this until he's all painted, but this is, these are the options that I have either all black eyes or green eyes. I think when he's painted and has an outfit, that'll be my final decision on what I want to do with him. All right, I'm switching to voiceover mode. We're going to jump right into making the shoes. So I'm using these elbow patches that I found at Joann's for the fabric of the vans. I really wanted it to look just like the high top skater shoes. So I went with a fabric that was very similar to that. And this part of the process is pretty rudimentary. I'm just kind of figuring out the overall shape and uh, size that the fabric should be. I'm using this paper as a template. It took a little bit for me to figure out the best way to trace a three-dimensional object. So I just kind of like loosely wrapped it around and got the overall parts that I wanted to cut and then I straightened it out later as you'll see. So then I cut it out with an X-Acto knife and this is where I kind of cleaned up the lines as I cut to make them more smooth and straight. And I ended up using this as essentially a pattern for to put on the fabric. A lot of what's happening here is just cutting out the pieces and then making sure they still fit around the, the base of the shoe and testing out the measurements and everything. It's a lot of just trial and error, honestly.
So once I had all the fabric pieces cut out, I moved into painting. Whenever I'm painting a sculpture, I always do a undercoat of a dark color. For shoes, I typically do black. And this paint was really transparent, so I had to do multiple layers and coats to get it like a very dark black color. But uh, I do the undercoat because it's just a good base layer. It kind of primes it in a sense. And uh, right here, this is why I do it. Because when you put in, when you put on another layer of paint over it, then the undercoat kind of shows through and it shows that texture. So this has always been my method, especially when it comes to shoes, because I like them to look a little bit gritty and it's worked out great. And I, it works for skin tones. Um, you know, you could do like a red or blue undertone, depending on the character, if you want the skin to look warm or cold. And yeah, it's been very great technique for me. And now I'm just gluing on the fabric to the shoe. I'm just using hot glue. I'm sure there's a better glue to use for this, but honestly, hot glue has always worked out for me. And I like, I like that it's a little bit forgiving. Like you can remove it if you mess up, but it's it usually holds pretty strong for me to where it won't just fall off. Like if you want to pull it off, you have to give it some force. So yeah, hot glue has been working for me. I think I, I use the Gorilla Glue brand, so maybe that's why it has a little bit more strength. And once I had the, this is like the tongue of the shoe, once I had that glued on, I went around and trimmed it so that it fit uh, within the, the white gum sole of the shoe. And this is me cutting out the iconic little squiggle on all the Vans shoes. I don't know if there's a name for it. But you know it's fans if you see that squiggle. And then this is my favorite part, lacing up the shoe. I just use common embroidery thread and I lace it up the exact same way you would lace up a shoe. I go through 
both eye, uh, eyelets on each side of the shoe and then crisscross them up and tie it and do the little bunny knot tie or the bunny ears and there you have it teeny tiny van so just repeat this exact process for the other shoe and here's the final touch I'm just using a white gel pen for this and it seems to be holding well but I should probably do some kind of clear coat on it to protect it and that's it for today's video thank you for watching next week i will post making the clothing here's a little peek of what that looks like uh, it's very much in prototype phase i'm still figuring it out i'm not the best at sewing clothes but i'm going to follow a human sized overall pattern and see if i can shrink it to fit the tiny little pumpkin head um, so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and learned something or feel inspired to make your own puppet if you want to help me out, you can click like down below. It helps kind of boost my video in the algorithm. Leaving comments helps a lot too. And if you want to stick around and see more content, you can subscribe to my channel or follow me on TikTok and Instagram where I post more of my artwork and funny puppet videos. And special shout out to my patrons. They are amazing. They support me every month and help me get one step closer to really getting to do this full time. So thank you guys so much. If you would like to join my Patreon, you would have access to exclusive content like bloopers, how-tos, uh, how we film puppet videos, weekly newsletters, all that good stuff. So if that's something that interests you, you can support me over there. It really helps fund all of these projects and videos that I'm creating. And that's about it. So thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.